In this video, we will be looking at the TI-84 calculator. We will discuss how to seed the calculator. So random values are all different for each student. We will input a list so that you can create a summary statistics list, um, other values that you may want to find. And on another video, we will talk about how to produce the graphical displays that you will that the students will need to know how to do um, through this geometry course so the first thing we want to do is seed our calculators if you've gotten a new classroom set or if your students have never seeded the calculator this means that um, the calculators come from the factory where they all start at the same place the very beginning of a random number table so if we all went in and did this, um, the random integer, we would all get the exact same value. Um, and it's, it's kind of funny to maybe let the students do that the first time. And you do that by going to um, math, go over to probability, which is the fourth column, and go down to random integer number five and for our lesson one um, we had 16 days so day one through 16 so the lower would be one upper 16 and we want to choose one value and so we're going to hit paste and enter and we get the value 13. so if, if you have not seeded calculators before a big group of your students almost all of your students are probably going to get the random number 13. So then let's talk about seeding the calculator. To seed the calculator, we are going to start by putting in some random number. So I normally have them put in their birthday. So my birthday is 07 06 1971. We're going to store that number store the number and go back to math the probability number one random and hit enter and it should give you back that number and now we are all starting at a new place in the random number table okay so now let's go back and pick a new row once we've seeded the calculator. So let's go back through random integer one more time. So we're gonna go math, probability, number five, random integer. There, the value start from one to 16. If it was zero to 30, we would just put zero to 30. So one to 16 and we want one value. Now on, on the activity, you're actually asking for two different lists. So I tell you what, this time let's do two lists. So two, we want to get two different values. And we're going to hit paste. And this is now telling me that my two random numbers between one and 16 are nine and 13. So I'm going to be putting row nine in L list one and row 13 in list two. I normally tell my students to write that down so they don't get confused. So let's go back and do that. So we're gonna go to put our numbers in our list. We're gonna go to stat, number one, edit. Oops, I've already got some numbers in there, so I need to clear this list before I get started. So to clear a list, we hit the up arrow so that it's on the on the title hit clear and the down arrow and it will clear that list okay so we want row 9 and 13 so l1 is row 9 so let's input those numbers 79 75 78 
78, 81, 72, 75, and 78. Okay, so the, the second list is row 13. So we're going to move over to L2. It's already clear and ready to go. And we're going to type 53. 84, 70, 73, 93, 50, 87, 77, 74, 72, 82, 74, 80, 49, 91, 53, 86, and 49. Okay. So both lists are now um, in our calculators. We're ready to find some values from those lists. So we're going to hit, I know this is very scary for your students and your students will kind of get scared the first time if they've not had practice with inputting lists. But if we hit second quit, now they're saved in there, they're good to go. Um, let's find some values for those lists. Um, one way to do that is to just go to one variable stats which will give you a list of all the values um, without having to individually ask the calculator for them. So to do that, we're going to go to stat and we are going to go to the second column, calculate, and one variable stats because even though we have two different lists that we want to look at, we're only looking at one variable. We're not looking at a two variable list of any kind. So number one, one variable stat. And first I wanna look at the values for L1. So I just hit enter three times and there they are. So here is the mean, here is the um, X bar is your mean, SX is your sample standard deviation and this is sample data um, sigma x is your population standard deviation the difference is what you're dividing by um, in a sample you divide by n minus one and in population you divide by n um, that's part of statistics um, n equal 18 tells me how many values were in my list um, minimum was 49, um, X1, um, quartile 1 is 64, median is 78, quartile 3 is 80, and the maximum is 96. So those are um, the summary for the first list. So if we wanted to go back and do that for L2, or the list 13 we would go to stat go back to calculate one variable stat but this time we need it to be l2 so we're going to hit the blue button and the number two and notice above number two there's a blue l2 and we frequency list we leave blank because each value is in there one time. We're not using a second list to tell the frequency 
um, of that of that list. And so we keep hitting enter. And now here's the summary statistics for list 13 or day 13. The mean is 72.05 repeating. Um, and you can go back through hitting the down arrow and getting all of your five number summary. Now, if you didn't want the students to get all of the information at one time, you can get this information individually. If you go to um, right above the stat button, you see the list. So if you go second stat, which is your list, here are all your names for list. Um, here are some operations you can do. You can have a sort of list, um, ascending, descending, um, just very different things. We're looking more at the math. So if I just want to know what is the mean of list one, what is the mean for day eight or day nine, sorry, um, then I can hit three and hit second L1. And there's my mean for um, day nine. And now if I wanted to do the mean for day two or day 13, um, I don't have to go back through all of this. If I hit second enter, it brings right back the, the what I've just put in and I can back arrow and type second L2. And now I've got both means right there together. And you can do that with any of the operations in those lists. So second list, I can go over and just individually find the standard deviation or the median or any of those values that you're wanting to find. So, um, and that kind of is just helpful so that you don't have to go into a lot of explanation about the difference between a population standard deviation and a sample standard deviation that will be done later on in a different math course or in um, their AP statistics course. So I hope this helped with getting your list done and your summary data.